now, what about this marriage you're talking about? I will tell you what I think, but please do not convey my words outside these walls. I do not wish to find myself in trouble for speaking in this way, but here is what I know. I have heard that the steward of Gondor, Denethor II, awoke from his slumber one night with the vivid memory of a dream. What that dream may have been I never learned, but whatever it was compelled him to propose that Imrahil command his daughter Lothriel to wed the steward's son, Boromir. This rightly gives good folk pause, for Lothriel and Boromir are first cousins, and such close marriages harken back to the dark days before the fall of Numenor, when kin married kin, and much harm was done. Imrahil disapproves of the notion, and I understand that Boromir does as well, but neither man can refuse the steward his request. Lothriel has stated she will consent to the marriage if she must, but the prospect makes her unhappy, and I heard she has some st been steadily leaving the city to seek the advice of the elves. Boromir But if I understand correctly, Boromir is dead. I saw signs of that in Rohan. Wonder if I should this might not be the best time to announce that. Because, wow, I am sure that will make things on the marriage side easier. From the point of view of battle, it may break morale. I had best not mention that now. I presume there are other parts in this library where I can find. The Lothriel's message to well, let's see if we can find anyone in this wing who can speak with me. This is a big library. Oh, oh, oh. shelves down here. Ah, oh, here's somebody. Hello there. What do you know of Umbar? Across the Bay of Belfalas, the harbor of Umbar provides the mooring for many ships. South of Dol Amroth, across the Bay of Belfalas, the Sea of Umbar stands. It is a large harbor, provides the mooring for many great ships, and a mighty fortress was built there. It was an important port for the Numenorians, but when strife split the loyalties of that people, Umbar became a contested land. It remained so throughout history, at times taken by Gondor, and at others occupied by the black Numenorians and the Haradrim allies. One of the most devastating losses of Umbar occurred following the kin strife, one of Gondor's darkest periods. The sons of Costamir, the usurper, chief architect of the Kinstrife, escaped from Gondor and named themselves Corsairs of Umbar. Ah, the Corsairs are the descendants of Costamir. Costamir's sons were all slain, but their legacy remains. The Corsairs have caused much hardship among the coastline over the years. So therefore, some of the sons may have had their own children. So, what about this kin strife? It is a sad portion of our history. 
and not pleasant to talk about, but in the name of study I will do so. More than a thousand years ago the king of Gondor sent his son Valakar to the lands of Ravanian as an ambassador of peace. While in that place Valakar met and fell in love with a woman of that people who bore him a son, Eldakar. In time, Valakar succeeded to the throne of Gondor. Tensions began to grow in the southern reaches of the kingdom. What would happen when Valakar died and his son came to the throne? Eldakar did not possess pure Normanorian blood, but a lesser portion due to his northern mother. Eldakar did not set, sit the throne for long before much of Gondor erupted in open revolt. A relatively a relative from the distant branch of the family line seized the throne, Costamir the usurper. The men of Gondor fought among themselves. They were dark and bloody days. Costamir was slain when, after ten years, Eldakar returned to the throne with an army. Costamir's sons fled Umbar, where they became the first of the Corsairs. Oh, yes. All right, and what do you know of the Corsairs, and should they be feared? The Corsairs of Umbar have harried our coastlines for many years, but the fighting force of Gondor has always been sufficient to drive them away. It may be different now, for our attention must be split between the Corsair raiders from the south and the shadow that moves towards Minas Tirith in the east. Yes, I have a feeling that was the plan. And who exactly are the heirs of Costamir then? I do not think any true heirs of Costamir still live. That was long ago, and the soldiers of Gondor could conceive of no mercy for the sons of Costamir. I am certain they were all slain. I am troubled by this title, however, for it means whoever is using it knows how to manipulate the Corsairs. Evoking the name of Costamir in this way is a highly effective means of mobilizing the enemies of Gondor. There is more behind this increase in Corsair activity than there has been in the past. These heirs of Costamir may not be heirs in truth, but they certainly intend to continue the legacy of trouble he began so long ago. Well, that I won't disagree with. I certainly can't disagree with that. All right. I suppose this way. Now. Any place I haven't looked yet? Oh. Here we go. Hello. I will tell you what I can about our kingdom. There is much of which I might speak. The kingdom was first established in the wake of disaster. The land of Numenor fell beneath the waves. Only fast ships could save the household of Elendil and bring them to these shores. High King Elendil's sons ruled the kingdom together, but when the dark power returned to Middle-earth, Elendil and his son Isildur and Anarion were slain. The line continued by way of Anarion's son through many years, until Irnir, the last king of Gondor, disappeared into Minas Morgul and was never seen again. For more than nine hundred years, rule of the kingdom was passed down through the hereditary line of the ruling stewards charged with maintaining the peace and welfare of Gondor until the line of kings is restored. Few believe that can ever happen. Any claimant would need to prove his an own broken bloodline, a task that seems insurmountable to this poor scholar. Well, I met the next claimant. 
Well, okay. Well, what about the geography? There is a great variety of lands in Gondor, from the wooded slopes of the Blackroot Vale to the coastal cliffs of Belfalas. Many folk till the lands of Lamadon and work the fertile ground through which flow the five streams further to the east of Lebanon. The lands of Anorian lie beyond the White Mountains, and at their eastern foot stands Minas Tirith, greatest city of Gondor, and the Tower of Guard, from which the dark lands of the east are watched. Prince Imrahil has gone there with many hundreds of his finest warriors, for war is certain to be joined in the coming weeks. If that is so, war will come first to Ithil. Ithilien, the lands beyond the river Anduin, on the border, on the very border of the Black Land. Well, okay, yeah, I will agree with you on that, but so what do you know about the stewards? Ever since the line of kings came to an end with the disappearance of Irner, Gondor has been ruled by the hereditary lines of stewards. The steward that sits now in Minas Tirith is Denethor the Second. A wise man, much like his own father, who was steward before him. Some forty years ago, Denethor married Phinulius, the sister of Prince Imrahil, and she bore him two sons. They were noble men, but they came rarely to Dol Amroth, and I have not seen them in many years. All right, so Boromir. It's the nephew, yeah. first cousins. Now I see her reluctance on the matter. Venunius loved Denethor, but some say that the tower of stone in which she dwelled was not to her liking, and she died after a dozen years, far from the seaside cliffs she loved. Denethor dotes now on his sons. The eldest, Boromir, will become steward of when Denethor dies. He is patrolled to the Lothriel of Dol Amroth, a match some find troubling. All right, yes, I've heard rumor of such. No, I'm not going to tell her what happened to Boromir. Yes, I heard Lothriel disapproved of that match. It is not my place to speak of it. Perhaps Nosseth will tell you more. She has more interest in such things than I. Yes, all right. Yeah. Well, well I guess that's very true, since... She did provide me some information on that part, and... Now... Where do I... the way? Ah, all right. Well, that was quite a... All right. I spoke with him. I see that Nozeth spoke to you of Lothiriel's betrothal. I should have counseled restraint. Ah, did my scholars help you learn anything of use, Pineleaf? It seems to me that corsairs are a dangerous threat, and Lothriel would be wise to recall the swan knights she sent from the city. I hope the information of my scholars proves helpful to you and to Lothriel, and awakens her to the uncertain future that awaits. I see the Nalsa spoke to you of Lothriel's betrothal to Boromir. I should have counseled her to exercise restraint. None are happy of that match save Denethor, and as he is the ruling steward, there are none willing to speak against his wishes. All I know of it is that he had a dream of some sort that convinced him of the rightness of this match, but I do not know what it could have been. I did not... And yes, I do not tell him that Boromir definitely will never wed Lothriel. <sighs> but I should tell Lothriel. She is the one person who should know.
No, actually. I wonder. She's worried about marrying someone too close of kin. I wonder what she would think about Aomir. The heir to Rohan. That might make a nice match. Oh, well. Probably too early to speak of such things like that. Alright, well. Here we go. I have spoken to the people at the library. You have returned. Why do you appear so sorrowful? What is wrong? Uh, you have returned from the library archives, finally? Have you learned anything that would help defend against the attacks of Umbar? Oh, why do you appear so sorrowful? What is wrong? Well, I've done quite a bit of traveling in my time, and I was in this area of Anduin, and one of the things I learned there from people who were present at the time was that your f betrothed Boromir is dead. I do not know what to say, Pineleaf. Boromir was a good man. He was always had my love and my respect, and I would have married him for Gondor. His father, the steward, dreamed of the triumph of the kingdom, and in the dream I was garlanded queen in Minas Tirith, beneath a fair and golden sun. My father, too, had a similar dream. He dreamt that I was in a high place, wearing a golden crown. Well, Maybe the bit... Yes. Well, maybe that thing about Elmir isn't so strange after all. I mourn for my cousin, Pineleaf. And for Gondor. I am unhappy with the marriage match, but now that he is gone, I am sad for his passing. Glad that he attained glory, and angry at my relief. I don't know what I feel. No. I will grieve at another time. For now, I must be strong. While my father is away, I must rule in Dol Amroth. I do not have the time to come to terms with my loss, Pineleaf. I will grieve at another time and reconcile my feelings then. For now, I must be strong. I set forth the Swan Knights for two purposes. One was the purpose of a ruler, to ensure the safety of her people. The other purpose was that a rebellious child acting out against the wishes of her father in the only way she could. That purpose I regret. Now is the time for the Swan Knights to return to Dol Amroth, for I will have need of them if we are to survive the menace of Umbar and the heirs of Castamir. Travel first to the beacon of Amun Lothnir, east of the city, and tell Nedros to return. He is the nearest Swan Knight, and is advanced of age, but it has not decreased his skill one measure. Travel then to the beacon of Meganon in Lamadon. Heligdir, the knight I sent to Lamadon, is also brave of heart. The last of the knights I set forth is naming Ravalon and he will be somewhere in the Blackroot Vale. I know not where. Yeah, I've seen him. Well then, we've got quite a journey up ahead for us. But that's a journey that will start in our next episode of Pineleaf in Gondor.